And uh, getting that put together. Hopefully, everybody saw that. Um, the reworking, the rewording of it. Would you like to read it for us? What we're doing? Yeah, I'll read Uh, we had discussion on it yesterday. We got Neil's stamp of approval. Uh, so, anyone would like to call the question unless there's more discussion? Question. Question has been called by Paul Arnold. All those in favor of the motion from proposal from District 19, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, motion carries. Great, we'll be able to do that with the classification form. Um, I'm assuming, Neil, you'll probably create a form or we'll ask somebody to create a form for them to be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure out a way. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, next, adjudication report. Uh, yesterday we voted and approved um, people to start uh, adjudicating for us, but one name was on that list in error. Uh, so what we need to do now is entertain a motion to rescind our passing of that motion. We'll amend the motion to remove that person's name, and then we'll revote to accept the amended motion. So at this point, I would like to entertain a motion to rescind our vote yesterday on the on, jazz. Just on the jazz. On the jazz. Um, so moved by Paul. Second. Second. Uh, so I heard Amy's voice, but. Uh, all those in favor. Amy. Amy. All those in favor of rescinding our, our, our vote yesterday, yesterday by saying aye. aye. All opposed, say aye. Now, Lawrence, would you like to make the amendment? <laughs> sure. Uh, the, the amended vote would just take Mike's name off the. Right, so we have to remove Mike. Yeah. Michael. Remove Michael Young. Remove Michael Young's name. Yeah. He didn't do anything wrong. It just, what, just he's not up. at that yeah. level yet. He's not. He yeah. hasn't done all those things yet. He's working his way through it. Right. He just got on the list a little prematurely. Motion has been made to remove Michael Names Young. And pass. And a person. Motion has been made to remove name from the list. All those in favor of removing Michael. Remove and approve the remaining names. Can we do that? Yes, we have to amend it first, and then we've rescinded the vote. So then we have to amend it, and then we vote to pass. Wait, wait, wait. We're amending the report. I thought we were amending the report. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, amendment's been proposed that we remove the name Michael Young from the Jazz Report. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right, now we have an amended motion on the floor. Okay, wait a minute. Lawrence made a motion. Who seconded it? Amy. Okay. Oh, no. Who seconded my, uh, Lawrence's? Bernie? Bernie? <laughs> well, you're going out in style, aren't you? I'm just going to go. Yeah, but he's in charge of that when he gets to this meeting. That's right. You put my thing down. Okay. All right. Motion on the floor to accept the amended jazz adjudication list. There, well, we, uh, you want to make the motion? Brian makes the motion. Yeah. Jennifer seconds. A little slow, David. Got to be quick, man. <laughs> uh, listen. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, he's on the list. He's on the list. Okay, uh, question has been called. All those in favor of accepting the amended report from the adjudication committee signify by saying aye. Aye. 
All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay. Um, Bernie, can I? Uh, Bernie has a motion for us. All right. I have a motion to add. It's a bylaw motion. We need to add an um, executive committee. It doesn't currently exist in our bylaws. So the motion is to add this committee that shall consist of the president, past president, president elect. Uh, junior high, middle school representative, and the executive director. The duty should be to make recommendations concerning the affairs of the association that shall, from time to time, deem appropriate. Number two, to serve as the finance committee. So the motion is to add that to. No, we need to add finance committee because it's already in the bylaws. That's the finance committee, right? Uh, the motion is to add to Article 5, Section 8 of the bylaws. Do we have a second? Second. second. Paul's quicker. Sorry, John. Any discussion? It's basically taking what happens now, we just make it official in the bylaws. Reflect it, making sure that our documents reflect what we actually do. In, in our bylaws, what were you looking for? No, no, no. So, should we put the executive or the vice member on that committee? Because it reads now, it's not like you can vote. All right. Any more discussion? Thank you, Brian, for checking on that. Get the clarification. Any more discussion? If not, we'll entertain a motion for. All right. We'll entertain the question. The question has been called. My Corey. I'm not going to, I'm trying to slow down. I'm trying to do fine. Okay, good. All right, so, so question's been called. All those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right, so we will vote on that again as a board in June, and then the general membership will vote on it at the general membership meeting in June as well. All right, we're moving through. If you would please, let's go back to proposals to the board. <coughs> And we're going to page two of proposals to the board. Down at the bottom of page two. And let me share the screen so that. People that may be watching can see that same motion. Everybody, I don't think we need to read it again but it does come as a proposal from the district. And of course, I wasn't here last night for a uh, discussion uh, for, on the report from the junior high middle school rep. So what I'd like to do at this point, if you want to leave the discussion on this. Okay. All right. So, so this is a motion. Mm -hmm. um, and the motion is um, to create a nominating committee, um, similar to um, the office of the president-elect. Um, and then there is some additional information about qualifications and uh, responsibilities. Um, we did address some of this last night um, with adding to the bylaws um, the committees and the honor band um, as part of the junior high middle school reps um, position. But I, this specifically um, addresses the nominating committee. Um, I think that the qualifications um, did anybody check to see if there's qualifications for president in there? Is there anything? In there's qualifications for all the members of the same chairs. Okay. How long is the qualifications for president? Um, so there's some items here for discussion. I, I think the intent here is the middle school meeting can be a little bit of the Wild West um, if there isn't someone in place to be nominated. Um, luckily, in the past few years, we've had qualified candidates be ready to step up at that meeting. Um, but it would be nice to have two candidates um, 
that are, that are both willing to serve and and be qualified to serve presented at that meeting um i don't think it's a bad idea okay yeah i i don't think i i think the the nominating part in my mind is separate from the qualifications i i don't um I don't think that that at this point is uh, refined enough to add to the bylaws. Can I ask a question out of sort of ignorance on this? How do, in the past, how has the election of this office worked? So at the middle school meeting, there are, uh, and that's the January, um, and it's, uh, there's supposed to be a middle school meeting every year it's been every two years for the purpose of the election only uh, nominations are um, taken from the floor so anyone can nominate anybody um, and for the most part i i want to say that we've, the middle school directors have taken care of having someone qualified to present um, the concern becomes if there isn't then what do we do? But then it's only a vote from the middle school teachers? Yes. Is that the middle school meeting? Yes. This is middle school directors <laughs> choosing their middle school representative. Okay. I guess I'm just wondering if it's not, is it written down anywhere that it's an election that comes out of the middle school yes. meeting? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's, that. that's, that's about the only thing. And what's happening? That's why the, that's that's why the, this motion. What's, what's happening? A lot of times the 800 Basically, put in a nutshell, imagine having election of president based on nominations from the floor of the No, 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 no. no. I mean, sure, sure, sure. I hear what you're saying. That's not my, my thought. I'm. <clears throat> but in our constitution, we have to go to Nominations from the Yeah, that's yeah, 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 in there. You can't, can't have nominations from the floor. And this still would follow the same yeah, thing. Yeah. We're, not, we're not trying to get rid of nominations from the floor. We're just trying to walk into the meeting with a plan. Um, and, and I'll be very honest. This year, I was very nervous going into that meeting because we didn't um, have a plan, and it worked out well. We we're very lucky to have Ashley, um, who stepped up and is going to be really great. But I, I don't like depending on luck. I like knowing at a time that everything's going to be okay. Amy, I think Amy had a comment. Yeah. Um, I know that, that in discussions yesterday that there was some concern about the makeup of the committee and people, not as many people having a say because of that. I think what this does, and, and as long as we direct the nominating committee to seek out names of people mm -hmm. from, you know, areas that encompass the entire state, um, I think it's more important to do this in the sense of when you go into that meeting, yeah, there are people that raise their hand and speak on that person's behalf, but you have to make a decision right then and there. Having this nominating committee still seeking the input from other people, the nomination committee will then be able to take the information that is shared when that person's not, you know, suggested and follow through to make sure that what people have said about their qualifications for the position, um, you know, are actually factual or, or, or that everything adds up. And then we can make a more informed decision about who represents us. Fantastic. Thank you. That was perfect. That was an, an excellent. Um, we, we also could have had a, a major issue this year because I was asked to nominate someone by that person. I did, and now that person has announced their retirement. <laughs> so if they won. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> And, and obviously, I would be on. It says that the 
um, nominating committee, I think somewhere in here says that it would be a previous chairs. My, my intent would be to ask district chairs, do you have anyone in your district that is outstanding? And obviously people could self-nominate them and sell, you know, self-nominate to the nominating committee. Um, so I guess the issue is between the 10 and what's actually heard. So let's look at our president-elect process, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Under that process, the current president gets six people, right? She's from president-elect. Past president. Past president. Past president. Picks, picks the six mm -hmm. people. And kind of, if you think about it, a bigger scope that's like the president of the United States going to the Senate asking six people to then pick the two candidates for the next elected office. And so, again, we want people to buy into this organization and have even more of a voice. So, I think this is great because we have a plan going into the thing, but we need to be able to give people a voice and nominate the state law offices. So, so, how would you propose? Uh, uh, sorry, how would you propose? Again, I, I don't know how you do that. You do an electronic communication process and then it goes to you or something. So, just again, the intent is great. We all have the best intent in the world, but then when we're gone, how's it executed? Right. Well, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be the, the committee members' responsibility to scout the <laughs> They, you know, in their area, they feel are qualified candidates from the membership of whatever their little region is. It is. It's just what what Brian's saying is we can't make them do that, right? And it's, we picked our friends who know all of our friends. We can't make the nominating committee go out and do all those things. But if we could find a way that we could elicit nominations from the membership. To go to that committee, it's right, a little but, wider you, but, but the person say I'm on that committee and I represent districts one through four. I would think it would be my responsibility to contact membership in districts one through four to send me a list of names of people from my area that would make qual a qualified, you know, nominee, and then it would be my job to take those names. To the full committee, and then we narrow down from there. But that's, but that's not being approved. But I think that whole process. Mm -hmm. is not easy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm looking at the nominating committee for this sort of election. I have I I searched through the entire yeah. membership list of people who served as a chair, boys and all. I found four males, male, female, 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 three white, three white, male, two black, two Hispanic, three middle, three middle school, two white school, two three for nine, nine point three one, three point one, three point one. I mean, I mean, I have spent hours to serve on that nominee. And what you're saying is that you all have. Well, this time, well, this time, time this isn't an ad hoc event. I'm just saying, we're looking at the process. I do trust. What happens when you're right? What happens when this new is right? That's what we have to figure. We have to take those ten people, and then we have to figure out what's going on. Right? 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 less flexibility you have to do what needs Correct. to be done but <laughs> the other uh, sorry we'll, go ahead and we'll come back I, I was just gonna say i think it makes the most sense if we align <clears throat> this nomination process with the way we align the president-elect process the other ways you're just going to confuse people later down the road because well this like what's to say tell someone like well how do i throw my name in the hat president-elect well you can't but i can throw my name in the hat for this so I think if you're going to do two separate nomination committees, then you have to run those processes the same, or you need to run this office position through the same nomination committee, um, and they're just proposing two se separate offices, one at the president-elect level and one at the middle school junior rep level, and maybe then the middle school rep serves as a member of the nomination committee for that I understand how optically that could be gross because that feels like it's just me passing off to who I want to see happen next. And maybe there's a way to submit, like how we have to like do, you know how like you can do like suggestions of all state conductors in the minutes. Maybe there's a way to capture that information there, like suggestions of 
nominees for whatever for the committee to look at. Like maybe there is a way to capture that data, but I don't think you can have two separate nomination processes. I think that's going to get really hard. Okay. okay. Get it. Okay. And I think, um, you know, we can talk about the, you know, the disillusionment of our membership and and all of that. that. I think that that's helpful in moving forward with policy. I think we want to create policy and, and do things that are transparent. Um, but if you're going, but to, if you're going to the FMEA conference, yeah, if you're going to the FMEA summer, summer conference, you're going, you're going to be known. You're going to be, you're going to meet people. Um, and and certainly the junior high middle school reps have worked with all of the band directors that have had students in the middle school honor band. So they're very familiar with many different directors from all over the state. Um, and I don't, I really don't think this is a bad thing. I think, um, I personally think we should go ahead and vote up the first uh, part of this, um, number one, two, and three, um, and then let the junior high reps that have served in the past come up with a process to present um, to you all on, on how nominations are collected. There were many really great ideas here um, but let the, the past representatives um, come up with a plan to present to you. That's that's my thoughts on this. So, and and Neil just pointed out, we don't have elections. So, so the, the next time, time that we'll need a nominating committee to even start this process will be a year from now. So we have so some time, time, we have some meetings. This is kind of new information for us, and, and there's nothing pressing saying we need to get this done before it happens. So if we'd like to table it, as Neil pointed out, and that would allow us some time to think about it and come back to it. Even Tamara, if you want to have some people, or, or Ashley, put some, you know, some thought into this, bring something back to us to think about a little more flushed out. That'd be great too. All right, either whatever the wish of the board is. So we have a choice. We can vote on this motion now, or we can table it, or we can send it to a committee. But I'm not sure what committee would send it to. So what is the pleasure of the board? Keep in mind this motion came from the past to junior high middle school rep also. That is true. Dana did make it. Dana it was a past uh, middle school rep. You have, you have some you have, you have constitution changes too. In the election, it spells out that middle school rep will be elected. Like, Well, it's not. Wait, wait a minute. What's it say in the Constitution? It says. So nominated at that would, would would have to change if we go to a. Committee. Right. Okay. So it will be a, a two and two. We'll change the bylaws and the Constitution. Yeah. So I think I would recommend approving this now so that we can start studying it and then make adaptations as necessary to move forward. You, you, Paul. So I move to amend the motion to include the first three bullet points to create the committee to get the ball rolling. And they'll come back to us. Okay. All right. Motion's Motion has been made, made and seconded. To, to and really, I guess what we're doing is we're striking <laughs> everything from the word qualifications down for now. Is that right? We're just leaving everything else. Okay. So we're accepting one, two, and three. That's it. Yes. yes. Yep. Any discussion on that? Do we have to move? Do we have to have the motion to make that amendment first and then vote on it itself? Okay. So, well, wait a minute. That's right. Don't, uh, yeah, because it came as a motion. Yeah. So, that's a, so you've mo moved to make an amendment. We've had, do we have a second? <laughs> Amy seconded. Discussion. Discussion. Wait, 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 wait. 
Can we just make a motion to accept only one, two, and three of this motion? Because if you're amending the motion, that means you're changing the motion in some way, shape, or form. We're not changing it. We're just accepting only one, two, and three. But she presented it as a motion with all five. Or, so you have to accept all five as part of the motion. <laughs> Well, can well, we have a motion to accept one, one two, two, and three? Yeah, that's the amendment. I think we need to clean it up that way. Amended and then vote. It'll, it'll be clear. So amended to just one, two, just one, two, and three. Just strike four. Well, just strike everything but one, two, and three. Yeah. Okay. I, I think, think that's, that's the motion that's on the floor, and that was seconded by Amy. Any discussion? discussion. Otherwise, we could call the question. Question. Question has been called. All those in favor of amending this. Motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same time. Now the motion is just the first three bullet points. Any more discussion? If not, we'll entertain someone if they would like to call the question. Could do that now then. John, I'm trying to give you, man, I'm looking right at you. I'm trying to get, get through your bone here that you can jump on this stuff. All right, so a uh, question has been called. All those in favor of accepting the first three, uh, first three, one, two, and three of Dana Cole's motion? <coughs> Who did second that? Hey. John. It comes as a motion. It comes as a motion. Sorry. Let me do a second. Yeah, you're throwing. You're, you're just you're messing with my cheek right now. Man. Okay, uh, so did you get rained on last night? I didn't. It was really it was a bubble. We just had a little bubble right over us. Um, all those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. All right. So we're set with that. Perfect timing. It is 929, and we were going to start with Hannah at 930. She's always punctual. She ran all the way here, 30 miles, uh, to get here. So Hannah, if you are ready, if everyone would like to pull up the uh, All-State Committee report. Only 10 today. Only 10? <laughs> Only 10. It's like my entire life. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. And congratulations on making it to the end of the year. Only a few more days left. For you. Um, before we can, of course, that was me. <laughs> um, before we get started, I'm going to ask you to grant me just a little bit of grace. I am recovering from the sickness that has been going around, um, and I'm fine, but my brain has still got that fog, and I'm having a hard time sometimes focusing or forming complete thoughts. So just bear with me if I am not my normal self. I'm really trying. Um, so. Um, we have a couple new people on our committee this year. Ashley Kaji is going to be joining us at Cornelia Middle School Honor Day, but also going to visit Middle School Junior High Rep. And Jacob Pickett is going to be coordinating the High School Honor Day. Um, Rick Fowler has graciously volunteered to uh, coordinate, our, uh, coordinate our Middle School Jazz Band, while Edgar is going to be conducting the group. So we are very excited about that. Um, excuse me. Our requirements were posted to the website and sent out to all of you on May 2nd. Um, that was requirements for everything, for middle school, concert, symphonic, and jazz band. Um, there is a new book that is being used for the high school symphonic band trumpet audition. So please make sure that your directors in your county are aware of that. It is the Advanced Concert Etudes for Trumpet, which is the follow-up book from the Concert Etudes book that we have been using. Um, so please make sure that your directors all know that they're looking at the correct book. Yes. Yeah, I, I tried ordering the book last week. Mm -hmm. That person says it's out of print. No delivery date for those conditions. Yeah, I thought Jeremy had responded to you. He did, yeah, but again, yeah, it's a little Okay, I, I got it from Amazon. Yeah. And because um, I ordered it from Amazon with my credit card, and then I ordered it from Beethoven and Company, and I've gotten, I've received both of them. So I have two. So yeah, I was going to say, we, I also went on Amazon to look at it, and I could get delivery date of next week. Um, if you are having a hard time, Jeremy's supposed to send you the requirement, that the music. He's going to send the PDF to you. But we do have a plan B for anybody who is not able to get the book in a timely manner. And I have an next one if anyone wants to. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, encourage your directors to check back to the website often for any updates or corrections to the requirements that we have um, sent us. So for our bands for 2023, I'm very excited to announce our conductors for all of the groups. We have Kathy Leibinger, who's going to be conducting the Middle School Honor Band. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Lucky folks. Um, the middle school Allstate man will be Cheryl Floyd. Um, the high school honor man will be Alex Kuminski. Uh, the 910 man, Dr. Joe Joss, Jay Jossum. Um, the symphonic man will be Emily Freinand. And Edgar Rubio will do the middle school jazz man. And Rob Parton will do the high school jazz man. Um, and then next I'm just going to go through some um, suggestions and things that have come from your districts. District 2. Um, to consider hiring a composer to write the Allstate etudes each year. We did review this, and at this time, we feel that is not a good idea to move forward. And the reason being, the books that we use um, are written with specific pedagogical elements in mind, meaning the etudes written for flute are specific for flute, whereas they are different for tuba. There's different needs and different things. And the books that we use currently isolate that and highlight that very well. If we were to have a composer write that for us yearly, we fear that we would lose those pedagogical elements. So right now, we, um, we're going to stay with the books that we have and keep moving forward with that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> All right. District 3 asked us to have the Jazz Committee review the consistency between the Allstate audition requirements and the script. And I promise you that will be a thousand percent better this year than it was last year and will be ready to go before your first audition weekend. Um, it was also asked that the Tiffany audition be a separate audition, um, as similar as how Piccolo is for flute. And we um, have talked about this and we are going to keep the Tiffany audition as a part of the full percussion audition. Um, and the reason being just of being supporting the well-rounded percussionist. Um, we don't specialize on mallets only or on snare drum only. So we don't want we just want to think about the well well-rounded percussion. Um, District 6 suggested that we have a button all state applications to indicate um, if a student preference if they are to be selected on multiple instruments or multiple groups. So this is something that comes up a lot regularly um, through committees, but also through conversations and things like that. Um, and it should be understood that if a student is registered in um, for anything that they are auditioning for, they are okay to make it on that instrument or in that band. So if a student is registered um, for multiple instruments, if they do clarinet and bass clarinet, um, they would be okay to be accepted on either instrument. By, and by registering, they are saying that they are okay to do that. Same thing for multiple banks. However, I know that's not the case, and a lot of students will register for as many things as they can, just so they have a greater chance at making the group. Some students will register for alto tenor berry, if they can, for a concert as well as jazz, to try to have a bigger chance to make it into any all state group. The understanding is that by registering, you are saying you are okay with anything that you are in. Um, I want to talk about how I select groups and just being fully transparent. Until I got in this book. I just have to clarify something. Yes. You're saying that they are okay with banking. One of the issues that came up in our district was people that were putting the orchestra. Yes. So they don't have any more orchestras. We we sub yeah we supply the wind players for the orchestra, um, and the way that that works is it just goes orchestra player band player orchestra player band player. But maybe stepping that out, that this is a possibility making it a little bit more clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think it's surprised a couple people in our district when they do orchestra. Yeah, I understand that, and I can we can make that more clear for sure. Yes. At yeah, one time, it all did. It does still. still. Do yeah, so it like, still does. Like even year's orchestra band, mm -hmm. and next year's band orchestra. Yeah, this year orchestra was selected first, and next year band will be selected first. Um, so I've been on this committee for six years prior to serving in this role, and I did not know how the groups were selected. So, which tells me that a lot of people don't know. And so, I want this to be fully transparent and have everything out there, and you can share this with your districts. Um, the way that the groups are selected is jazz band is treated as an elite, um, elite ensembles and they are selected first. So once the jazz groups are selected, then I move to the concert groups and I select, uh, oh, let me finish first. Um, I select the um, concert groups based on score. So the first 15 flute score in, first 32 clarinets or whatever the number is that those students are in. If a student would be accepted on multiple instruments, then I look at their score on the two instruments, and then what would be best for the band. So for example, if a clarinet player auditioned on 
um, clarinet and bass clarinet, if they scored like 30th on their B flat clarinet, but first year bass clarinet, well, obviously we need the bass clarinet player more than the 30th clarinet player. And so that's where that, that decision comes in. Um, if they were to make it into multiple groups, well, the jazz band is selected first. And so they would make the jazz band over making in the concert band. Now, I know that this is um, an issue and a lot of concern for a lot of people because they have multiple interests, but there is a preference for kids, and it comes up a lot. If you were to ask me um, why the process is this way, all I can tell you is this is just how it's always been. And that is not an answer that is a good answer for an organization that's trying to constantly move forward, make improvements to help serve our kids the best. So I will tell you that um, the way that the current system is, we are not able to allow students to select their preferences because of the selection process. It would take too long. We'd have to revamp a lot of things. However, I hear the concern from directors and students and preference, and um, this is something that our committee is going to look at over the future because um, it needs to be looked at. It will not have an update for you in June because we have some other things that we need to discuss, but this is something we're going to have some philosophical discussions and, and try to move forward to best serve um, that process and move forward with it. Yes? Three bass players, are they supplied by the orchestra or do we actually have people try it? We don't have those. No, they're supplied by the orchestra. They're supplied by the orchestra. Mm -hmm. So they're not allowed to for that. No, right. that's a practice. No, yeah, you do this all the time as you do talking about stuff and you don't let you finish. So you finish it and you ask the question. Oh, awesome. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Like, I think that, uh, you know, overall, uh, this process, I've always wanted to uh, get you open at this. And I, I, I think the great compliment uh, would be just how this how this all comes together. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. I love it when it all works out. Me, I'll answer questions. Yes. I tell you, many years ago, when this entire system kind of changed to what it is now, there was a lot of thought put into how it was going to take place because it was a big change at that time. So it's been time tested and has been working, but obviously there's a lot of questions that come up just from lack of knowledge of how it actually works. Okay, um, going on, um, from District 8, restrict the time of the sight reading exercise to the time it takes to study. Agreed 100%. The sight reading exercises moving forward will not be any longer than 30 seconds to play because they're giving 30 seconds to study. And so we're going to be contacting our sight reading composer who will make sure that the, um, the length of the sight reading will not exceed 30 seconds of playing. Um, we evaluate the content limits for each level of sight reading. Um, this comes from my district, so I can speak on it just a little bit. Um, there were some people in our auditions that felt that the um, sight reading was too hard for students to read, um, and, and students were not set up to be successful in the sight reading part. Um, we did look at the content limits, and we feel that they are appropriate for what they are currently. Um, the perfect purpose of sight reading helps the judges differentiate auditions. <coughs> Um, the sight reading is not a large part of the score, but it is an important part of the score, and it does help separate some students who are really close to scales and with, um, thank you, prepared, see, the brain fog, <laughs> thank you, um, the prepared pieces. So um, the sight reading will, the content limits will stay where they are, but please encourage your directors to look at the sight reading standards that have the, the content limits in them. And it is very spelled out what the, the rhythmic requirements will be, the time signatures, the um, key signatures, anything that, that they will see and could potentially see in the sight reading room is all laid out in the content limits for you. And, and can I jump on that? Please. And, and with the sight reading, the goal is that not a single kid in the state of Florida nails it. Nobody plays it perfectly. Because if people are playing it perfectly, then there's no point and now it does, doesn't differentiate anymore. So, so we just have to know that that, that, that is the goal of sight reading, is to differentiate. And if everybody plays it the same, it doesn't. Because so many kids do go in and nail their scales and play the, the, the prepare piece perfectly. Sight reading is the only thing that differentiates. So it has to stay at that level. We have to think about only, it has to differentiate the top 10 players on that instrument in our whole state. So it's got to help your kids get that in their mind too. 
Sorry. Oh, no, good. And actually, we had some people now the site reading this year. Like, perfect squares on the site reading. So it is playable, and people are, are doing it. So which is awesome. Um, another one is, can we add a time limit to the chromatic scale? And the answer is yes. We will be adding one for next year's auditions. Um, the purpose of adding a time limit is just to eliminate the five minute long chromatic scale where a student is starting and stopping 17 times because they know they can do it. Um, and you know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna, we're gonna just spend some time making sure that we get a time requirement that is accessible but not ridiculous. Um, just playing around, we played in the three, three octave chromatic scale with middle school requirements in 20 seconds. So it shouldn't be, you know, if we're going to discuss it as committee is what is reasonable, but we don't need to take three or four minutes for the next one. Um, revisit how all, all state scales are scored. Um, all state scales is something that came up from a lot of districts, and this is something that I hear is, I know is, is a big concern, and I'm just going to say one blanket thing that will cover a couple of districts. Um, we are going to be looking at updating the rubric for this year's auditions. Um, currently, students are being rewarded for playing multiple octaves and scales, um, probably more than some should. Um, and it's causing um, not good tone qualities, not as prepared, fumbling through things just to get more points for those scales. And so to alleviate that, we are going to look at the rubric, update that, and also, we are going to spend some time, this is going to take us time to put together, but looking at the octaves of scales that are, that they're, that they're playing and, and having suggestions for what the octave should be um, so that we don't have these four octave, three octave things yeah. that we don't need to be having. Um, and also another concern is um, just leveling the playing field a little bit because some students have, you know, the professional instruments with the extra key where they can get that one extra note for that extra octave, but a lot of students don't. And for whatever reason, that also is not fair. So just to level the playing field. So um, we will be, <coughs> excuse me, updating the rubric for this year's auditions, and I will give you that update in June in our meeting. And then we are going to spend a lot of time talking about scales and the octaves, and that will be an ongoing process that I will update you each time that we meet. Um, and that goes to the next thing. <clears throat> that also talks about District 15. And then District 19, um, can we provide detailed information? Basically, um, all state information is found in about 17 different places on our FBA website. So you can click here for the rehearsal schedule, you can click here for your conductors, you can click here for the hotels, but then they have the rates on this page. And it's, when you know how to navigate it, it's not bad. But if you're somebody who is new or a parent trying to isolate, find this information, it can be just frustrating. So we are going to streamline it so it's all in one place and just easy and user friendly. Can I add that both the high school honor band and the middle school honor band, which is was my job, we send out a letter to students that details all of those things already. So um, directors should be getting that, you know, November <coughs> issue that has all those details on. And that's all I have for you. Can we accept the requirements, the all state requirements? Do we have to vote on that? I forget. Yes. Yeah, it does. So we don't need a second. It already comes as a motion from the from the uh, from the committee. Any discussion? Question. Question has been called. All those in favor of accepting the all state requirements, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Any questions for Hannah before we let her get it run somewhere else? <laughs> Back to that. <laughs> she saves so much money on gas, y'all. Gas prices are right now. She can just get anywhere. She, never mind. Okay. Um, any other questions for Hannah? Okay. Great. Thank you, Hannah, so much. We appreciate it. Okay. All right, so that takes us to our classification discussion. <laughs> okay, um, 
So one thing we did not go over yesterday, and I, I know you already discussed in your meetings, but there were some uh, suggestions that came out of the uh, task force on the all state on um, classification things. We looked at redoing the site reading. I made a couple tweaks to what the classification system is. So I think the Neil put those in our folders. I believe so. I think I saw them in there. I'm looking. Um, did you put them in there? I thought you did. What is it called? Uh, that's what I'm trying to remember what it was called. I don't know. Did you, did anybody see it in there? No. Yes, thank you. Brian, it's a good thing you're here, man. Yeah. Okay, so if you would please, I want to go ahead and do our first morning break. Uh, we'll, we'll reconvene at 10 o'clock during that time if you need to. Take a moment to read back through these, read back through the proposals that came from the districts. When we come back at 10 o'clock, we'll begin our classification discussion. So you all then.
I think it's probably for like Saxon. Yeah. For Saxon, they start on that. So you do the upper range. Sorry. Sorry. And I would argue that Saxon is more likely to play at a spot of a little more. But they will use Saxon. They will be part of my head. It's a good bit of only. Yes, 
percentage of like a percentage of the
Jadi so what I would propose at this point is that we, instead of trying to take each one of these, and, and actually before we do anything, if you would please take a moment in your folder now is the District 7 FBA classification suggestions to the board. Uh, if you would open that document up and read through that. <coughs> that we have not had a chance to look at yet. So that, What's the name of it again? It's called D7-FBA Classification Suggestions to Board. So, okay. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, is there any more time to read through the District 7 letter? Okay. Okay, so what I want to do at this point is to go into open discussion about the classification system. I think that if we try to go through each proposal by itself, we're going to end up talking ourselves into circles and have to re revisit. So we're just going to do open discussion on the classification system based on either your own personal thoughts, your district's thoughts, or the proposals that have come in front of us here. This is going to be very difficult to do without side conversations, but please, let's keep the side conversations on hold because for two reasons. Number one, it's just, we all know it's disrespectful. Number two, it's really hard to be trying to get your thoughts out and be distracted by what's going on over here. So it's very distracting to the speaker as well. Of course, this has a lot of branches, a lot of issues to it. So we're going to want to have those side conversations. But please let me implore you not to allow side conversations to happen at the moment. Next, we all do have opinions, but we'll try to keep the... I agree with so and so, and then we say the same thing that that person just said. If we're adding something new, great, but try to avoid simply restating what someone's already said. Reset with all that. All right, so at this point, then we're ready to start the open discussion. Would anyone like to open? My district was confused, asking for some clarification on the classification of P and why people would need that classification if they could 
request to reclassify anyway. So I was unsure how to answer that question myself. So I'm bringing it here to get clarification. Sure. Currently, the lowest classification that a high school can request and still earn a rating would have them play a grade two and a grade three on stage. Classification E would allow that band, a high school band, to play a grade one, two grade ones, a grade one and two, or two grade twos for a rating. So that's why that exists at the moment. Yep. Yes. Uh, state would not change, it must be two grade threes. So it would only allow them to play a rating at district, they would not be eligible for state. Once someone requests E, is that duty or is it they have to request that every year? Or request it, it, it request request that every year. It, so it, it, now it just says that they request and they're given that classification. Well, well I, and I, I guess, guess that's, would, I guess it would fall under any other request for classification. If I request C, I'm a double B school and I request C, it is for that year, I've got to request C again the next year. We've eliminated all of the working our way back up or doing anything like that. That doesn't exist anymore. So I think where we put it in the handbook, we acted on just as any other request for classification. Anything else? Yes, sir. Quick. Quick show of hands. How many of you had bands to request the e classification? Wow, that's it. Okay, I was just curious as to how that how that came down. Okay. That's right. Uh, I just wanted to say that I liked how in the piece that announced, I liked how it what they did at that and just had the balls of us. I thought it made more sense. Cool. Is this discussion also taking into the site reading? Also, or just 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 we're, we're open. We're open discussion. Okay. Anything in the classification which would include okay. the site reading portion as well. In in my district, whenever we. Uh, when I presented the um, the classification thing, it came out. There was a lot of discussion about um, doing the averages on what you played on stage, and the consensus that came out from us was why penalize a group that wants to go above and beyond on stage and make them sight read harder music in sight read because you know. They wanted to. They wanted to excel on stage because they had the students to do it. But why then possibly put them in a? Which both sides came up. It's like, well, if you, you were able to prepare this music on stage, you should be able to cite this, which is very <laughs> true. But then, however, why open up a potential pitfall for you in sight reading that could take all that work you did on stage and work it out? And then the other side was we have. I've talked to multiple. And we had one, one, one director in our district who does a lot of sight reading, and he said that he was against it also because he really enjoys when he goes into sight reading, especially here in some of these bands that really the high caliber bands come in and sight read, and they sight read the music just like they were playing on stage. And he says that is that makes him feel so much better about keep the sight reading the way it is as, as it's tied to your classification, not by what you play because then it gives that particular judge an opportunity to hear music played at such a high caliber, even though, yes, it's easier than what they can actually perform, but it just is so much more of a musical presentation for that. And, you know, it shows what the band really is. They're not, you know, working crazy hard trying to play these rhythms and, and everything else. They're making music. Uh, uh, there's a lot of truth in what you say. Currently, we are actually penalizing the school for being large by making them play harder music simply because they're larger. So I get what you're saying, but it, and there's a lot of facets to this. But I'll be honest with y'all, that site reading proposal that came out from the task force 
it was not necessarily a this has to be done this way right now. It is a here's a starting point. Let's log this out and see what the reaction is. And it was really interesting to see how many different reactions on both sides of everything came out. I've had a lot of middle school directors that came to me and said, I will never play a grade. If this goes in, I will never play a grade three again. Because I don't want to read now. I don't want to read music that that's hard. Something that's really hard right now, and one of the most confusing things is when you look at the grade of the sight reading music, sight reading music is not graded the same way that we grade concert music. So a grade two concert piece may be a grade three sight reading piece. And so it's really hard to not get confused by those numbers. Really hard not to. Because of the way that, and that's just simply the way that uh, the music publisher that we're currently using to create our sight reading books, that's the way he numbers it. And of course, numbers are universal. We all use numbers. They just don't correlate with each other at all. So it feels strange. High school director saying, I'm never going to do a grade five again because I don't want to have to sight read harder music. So it's been very interesting to have those, to hear, have those discussions come back about all the different sides. We go Amy and then Neil. Amy? Um, one of the things that came up for me, I won't tell you the exact words of what my district said when I presented uh, that proposal. Um, but one of the things that came up that sort of stuck with me is that, you know, we kind of, or, or some of us at least, associate <coughs> our music performance assessments with the band equivalent of being our FSA, or whatever we're going to call the current standardized testing. And if we have a kid that's taking English language arts, whether they're in the advanced level class or not, they're taking the same FSA, they're being asked the same questions. So we don't make an advanced FSA, you know, language arts test for the kids who are in an advanced level class. They're taking the same thing because what they're looking for are basic concepts that a child of that level of development should be able to do. And that's interesting because someone else has proposed everybody in the state should sight read the same thing no matter what. Because right now we're saying the bigger your school, the harder your sight reading has to be, which is also not in the FSA test. Correct. Right? So there's a lot of, you're right. It's a great point about this. And that's a big point. Uh, that, that we look at it overall. So every high school band in the state sight reads the same level. Every middle school band sight reads in the same level if we're going to make it align exactly with the FSA. Not saying we should do that, Correct. but that's something that we have to think about as well. Correct. Your comment that you made about we're penalizing the larger schools. Mm -hmm. um, each year, I probably don't get any more than, I think the most I've ever received as far as requests for classification change was maybe 120, and a lot of those were middle school. So I found that there are there more are schools, schools playing, playing above their classification than there, than there are those requesting a lower one. It's true. true. And, and one more, more thing. thing. Um, just for whatever it's worth, because, um, because I had the opportunity to talk to out-of-state people that come in and judge our state band, uh, MPAs, I explained to them, they always ask, you know what, However, these classification tournaments. So I explained the whole process, and I explained, especially this year, what we did to make it easy on everybody. And I said, expect a lot of grade three literature that you're going to hear. But I always get the comment that FBA seems to do it the right way from all the out of state out of state people that we are perceived as doing it the right way by a lot of people. So just be careful. Yeah, what you're Sorry, Brett, and I'll, I'll keep. I feel pretty strongly about the whole site reading correlation thing for a couple of reasons, and I'm trying to think beyond my own program of what's best for everybody, right? I do think that it's relevant to kind of pair your site reading difficulty with your stage difficulty. However, I don't think it should be an average of what you plan on stage. Cliff Matson would say probably that's a disapproval error. Right, because you're a really good teacher and you're able to get your kids to perform at a higher level than they, than they should, 
that doesn't mean because you're able to get kids to work hard over three or four months to prepare the speech that you can do that in five years. Now, of course, you should be teaching sight reading skills and fundamentals in your classroom, along with if you choose to push your kids to play a harder piece than they should. So maybe instead of taking the average, and this is just something for people to think about, the average of your two pieces on stage, how about it should be tied to the lowest grade of the piece that you play on stage. So that currently, here's what's going on okay. in FOA. No, that's okay. It's currently going on in FOA, but what they found over time was that someone would do, they, they, A, B, C, D, E is what they do. Someone would do a, an A, and then they do a C to get yeah, your sight reading. So, so FOA had to make a rule that both of your pieces, pieces not, your two required have to be within one grade of each other. But I know a lot of people that love to play a grade six and a grade four very well. And so that's the, that was the reasoning behind the average. And Chuck Fulton used to always do a grade five and a grade three. And that grade three was, and then his grade five pushed the kids. That's, what we, that's the only reason we went average, but I know what you're saying and understand it. That's also why we didn't go with the top one either. We, we try to go, well, let's kind of see where, you, where you're at. But there's no great, again, Man, there's no great answers. Uh, we, I had a couple questions that came up. One was with the proposal, there's a, a disparity between the middle school and the high school. Mm -hmm. like the middle school is capped out, a two year middle school that has a different standard. Than, so that was an issue. And then one person wanted to know was there any data that supported or that suggested that groups were not literate? Why did this come about? Was there something that was <laughs> well? It is. It, it it was it was more the case of what you sight read is not tied to what you do on stage, and so should we? And and that comes back to Brian's question that he wrote in the District Seven. What is the purpose of sight reading? Why do we even have it? What are we doing it for? And of course, it is to check literacy and 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 that we're teaching all those skills. Not only literacy of notes and rhythms, but musicality. Do kids understand how to <coughs> phrase and start a phrase the first time, and all those things start to go into it? Go back, to Paul. Go back to your first part of the question again. Oh, the disparity between middle school and high school. The biggest reason was that is time. Many people feel that there is no substitute for time in sight reading. And middle school students simply don't have enough time, particularly in the two-year middle schools. In the middle, three-year middle schools, they don't have enough time to acquire enough experience that's necessary to successfully sight read harder music. So that's why the disparity between they can perform two grade sixes and sight read at point five. That's right. Well, that's and that's the, but and that's the way our current class. Reading, that's the way it currently is right now too. Right. But that's you know. If we're changing, why do we have different standards based on um, that's it? Um, Absolutely. As, as someone who taught at a two-year middle school versus a three-year middle school, um, it is quite different. Um, you're, you're starting with your beginners and seventh graders. They do learn quicker. Um, but you really go from this old man, number 98, to grade three. It, it is, and, and I was at an MA school. Um, in Brevard County. So we had two years and we were MA. And there there really is, um, there needs to be an exception for those schools that only have two years. You go from beginning band to advanced band. There is that, not that seventh grade year of reinforcing and, and, and teaching ensemble skills. It is like that. So it, I, I agree 100% that that exception needs to be made. And it currently is in our handbook now. So that's right. just keeping something to say the handbook anyway. But I, I know what you, but that has been a strong argument. And, and again, Brian makes it here in this paper too. Same, Same thing. thing. I just want to make sure that <clears throat> you and I talked about this. There was a lot of confusion, I think, across the top part of the state anyway, about how this proposal reads. The averages isn't what you play in sight reading. It correlates to a score that determines what you read in sight reading. So if you take the average, and you end up with a four, then you actually read a two to two and a half in sight reading. Or if you play a four to five on stage and your average score is a four and a half, you read a three or a three and a half in sight reading. It doesn't mean you're reading a grade four or grade five in sight reading. It 
just comes up with a composite score, and then that score correlates to your sight reading level. And I think that when you look at this, that's confusing, uh, but it doesn't directly correspond. If you play a five and a six, you're not reading a grade five in sight reading, you're reading a grade three in sight reading. That's right, that's right. I think that's a really good point, but I think would calm a lot of people's minds about the idea that either the standard is, is going up or going down. Um, and I don't know if anybody has looked at District 7's proposal. It's in field court, so if you're finding any more to adjust into the conversation, that might be a help a good guiding point. Um, when we talk about site reading, the District 7 response really, I, I don't think the, the bands that are playing, at least at the high school level, in grade five and grade six, are as worried about the site reading changes for them. I mean, my wind ensemble will probably be okay, regardless of if the standard goes up just a little bit. We will probably be fine. I think um, this does tie to what, part, what Paul said, is that it does connect it, maybe make the standard a bit higher for the middle schools, especially those who are going in playing grade threes, playing above classification. Their site reading demands are going up. So one argument that I've heard to change classification is that we don't want the FBA standard to go down. And I would argue that it's making the standard go up slightly for middle schools and then really staying, staying the same for, for high schools. Um, and I like Brett's the discussion about what, what orchestra does with the lowest piece and averaging it out. I thought that was good. So, um, so I just wanted to make sure everybody could see uh, the District 7 report because it really does, Brian did a really good job of addressing all of these things and thinking through all of these things, not to mention the lettering system just being a lot cleaner and a lot clearer and more unanimous across middle school and high school and looking that much clearer. Thank you. Um, so on the, the permutations and what you would cite based on the average of your level, this is your final state of this. I think the only concern for me is that when you look at all the different different permutations, it's not consistent from how many levels below what you're playing on stage that averages versus your site reading. In some cases, it's only a half. And I know you said it's hard to really quantify the site reading. I have piggybacking on that. So if, it, if you're playing, you know, if you average out to a grade one, well, then obviously you're only going to be site reading like a half grade level below that. But in some cases, it's a whole grade level, it's a grade level and a half, almost in some instances, two. So the discrepancy between where you fall in and, and the, the differences if that could be a little bit more even out and made more consistent, I think, you know, I would throw them in our district if they don't come through. It just gives a little bit all over the place in terms of the levels of standard. If I, yeah, there, there's, in, in both in the District 7 and, and in some of the other ones, the classification that um, seems to be treated the least equitably is MC. And that is most of our middle schools in the state of Florida are MC. Um, and, you know, an MC band is realistically probably going to play um, a 0.5 to a grade one march. They're going to play a grade one and a grade two. And then they're expected to cite your grade one music in the sight reading room. And that is not equitable. Um, you have bands going out there playing grade fives and they sight read at three and a half. Why is a middle school band who just played two grade ones maybe and a grade two on stage expected to cite me to grade one. That's what they just played on stage. So I think um, we need to address those and make sure that, um, and my solution was to make the mark a 0.5 for MC and to make the overture a one. Um, and I think that that would solve some of those issues. Um, it is also a big concern for middle schools who play, a, and many, like 50% of middle schools play above their classification the music they select. Um, not as many middle schools are going to do that. It, it's, that's just a reality. Um, and so high school directors, <coughs> they see um, the, the students that are coming in in the future, if we, if we did this, they may see students with less experience playing higher level literature. And, and just, just remember, remember that the site reading grade one, one is not, not is not equal to grade, grade one on stage. stage. Well, but the stuff that Larry sends us is grade one. Well, but, but, but that's, that's a different, different that's, that's a different discussion, discussion yeah. that we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about differently, but so just so they're not the same. So then, 
we well, can go to one of our districts because to be honest with you, I'll tell you what my district said, like unanimously, this is the stupidest thing we've ever seen in our lives, was the exact words. For whatever reason, that's what they said. Not necessarily that Amy Ferris agrees, but um, I think it would make a much bigger difference if we can clarify that to the membership, that they're seeing that, you know, if you play average of grade five, you're playing a grade three. Well, cyber meaning grade three is technically like what a grade two is for a performance stage. I think that might help people uh, understand it and digest it a little bit better if we make that more clear to the membership. And I think maybe we should not be afraid because if we're, I think we have all been in situations during MPK preparation where we've gone, I really need to sight read. I really need to stop working on this music and sight read. I think there are benefits to maybe having a little bit more ties to the sight reading room because it is going to make our teaching better. And yes, there is going to be a little bit, there's going to be a bit more pressure. Should, should we stray away from that or should we, should we welcome that and and make every attempt to make that a bigger part because I think we can all agree that at a music performance assessment that that site reading has a lot of value and we should probably be doing more of it. So one other element of this that I think is slightly confusing is there's a lot of elements here from, okay, we're talking about averaging the, the difficulties of pieces you play, then that means you would site read MC but then MC is average difficulty of a one, but one in sight reading is not quite the same difficulty. And it's just, so if there was a way to, to streamline this and say, look, here it is, if you're, if it's the proposal is the average is grade four, your sight reading two grade levels down, which is approximately grade two, the same difficulty as you would think of on stage three. Just something to streamline because, like, I know, I know what the intent is, but it's just very difficult to make that happen. So are we talking about adjusting what MC, the difficulty of MC is with this, or has MC always been a great one on difficulty? In the site, not, not, not so, so, so there's no adjustment to what MC, MC and all those things are. Those, but those are Larry's number, Larry Clark's number, his company's number, Excelsior's numbers that we have to use at the moment, because that's the way it's defined. We don't have to, but that's the way it's defined, that Larry and his company defines it. So if there was a way for us or for the district to craft uh, just a little bit more um, uh, narrow proposal that's just you know, spelled out a little clearer for debate, I think that would help. I think there's good conversation going on, but it's just hard to wade through this because of all the variables. And, and, and Corey, I love that you just said that because that's. One of my favorite things about this is as we get in the classification discussion, how many variables there are in all of it, not just the sight reading part, but what we're going to do on stage and how that's going to work and how it is going to relate to sight reading and how we determine it and do all those things. There's so many variables in all of this stuff. I think it's important to maybe remember as you're discussing with your school teachers, there's only so much easier you can get than in grade one. I mean, what are we supposed to do? I mean, I mean, yeah, like the high schools are going two levels lower, which is cool, but two levels lower than a grade one on stage, what, what is that? <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> the judge plays the kids, listen to the judge. Well, and that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, you've got to realize. Yes, it should be easier, and I, I don't disagree, and I, and I like the proposal that we did yesterday of like having something written in, you know, that is more feasible, but it can't get too much easier. Talking, uh, talking to a lot of music supervisors about this, because they have the chance to get into a lot of classrooms, a lot of them f were, were saying, we really need to cap it at the high school never goes above, no high school ever has to play above B, sight reading. Sight reading B, no high school should ever read A, and middle school should never sight read above MC. So it, it's really interesting to see the crazy variation there is from different perspectives across the state as we get into it and look at it. Um, this kind of goes along with everything, but this came up 
in the form it's talking about turning in our classification as we normally would in October with everything. And also if we, if the school wanted to um, request a classification, mm -hmm. However, there was no provision written into that as to what happens if in January they find out that their class schedules have changed, they, they lost students, picked up whatever. There was no, um, there was nothing in there that still said they could uh, request classification in January. For, for this, this, this proposal? Yeah. Well, but, but they're not requesting what they're going to sight read. As soon as they change their music, their sight reading changes. That's automatic. Josh will just simply create a form that you'll get as a district chair. Here's what everybody's sight reads based on what they're playing on stage. So, so as soon as so so their sight reading level, based on what everybody's doing. So when they email Neil, when they send Neil the letter in January requesting a different classification, as soon as that their sight reading is not picked until they enter the music in the computer. Okay, well, the question was, they knew that that's how it is currently. And that's, that's what it would still be going forward. It doesn't okay. change. Anything. See, it didn't did specify that. So they were like, well, okay, well, did something change? That's no, why that was nothing, it, okay. it's, it's, Yeah, it keeps the same. Okay. So just a potential problem that sure. I think could come out of this is the 10 day music change window. Mm -hmm. Now we have a lot more flexibility. If, if this were to go, we can change music drastically among that window, and that changes the site reading drastically in a lot of cases and from a chairman perspective you build your schedule based off of classification and then size of ensemble in most cases so if your schedule is already built by 10 days out and then we're changing that it's not a major ordeal in terms of how they play on stage but it it could throw some well you're yeah. right. I see what you're saying, but the classification of what they sent you does not change their classification. A cl what we're, we're still gonna, every band is still going to have a classification based on school size. That doesn't change that. that this site really doesn't change that at all. No, that is not the way I read that at all. I read that as you take the pieces on stage and that determines your classification, which then it determines what only, you cite. It only determines what you sight read. So school. So then, what's the so now a class C band who does a five and a six is sight reading something harder than the C sight reading. Then what's the point of the classification at all? If it's to, to, to determine what they their bare minimum of what they have to play on stage. It doesn't change anything. This proposal changes nothing about what they do on about their requirements that they have to do on stage. So, it does not. Sorry, correct me if I'm wrong. Because I think that now I have this seems like new information to me. Yeah. Let's say I'm a class BB, mm -hmm. and I'm supposed to, what is that, that two fours? Mm -hmm. Two threes, two fours? Three and a four. Three, Three and a four. Mm -hmm. That's the minimum I'm allowed to play. That's so right. then if you go above that, that increases your sight reading. That's but right. I still have to request to go lower. That's right. So this. This only deals with sight reading. It has nothing to do with what you play on. It has nothing to do with your requirement and what you're required to do on the stage. So I guess where I'm getting confused with this is that in that report that was sent out from the I lost it now, from the task force, the average that came out of that correlated to a classification. It correlated to the classification to the classification of the sight reading. Okay. That so that but that's not your classification. No, your classification is still your school size. Okay. This, has, this does not change any of that at all. I feel like that makes it more confusing for a site reading judge and for a district. Well, but, but that's why it can't. Well, that's fine. You can, I mean, it can be more confusing. And I get that. That's why Josh would just simply hand you a piece. You, you could print out the piece of paper from Josh that says, here's what everybody's site reads. I got it. Yeah. It just it still feels. So basically, all it's doing is addressing people that are playing music that's harder than their current classification. Okay. Question. So, classification is still filed. Is that the way that's also part of this proposal? Is that the comments being about classification is filed as opposed to requesting? So, we still submit classification by the third meeting, correct? The classification. Uh, we should go back to the second meeting. Second meeting, sorry. So, 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 classification tells us the minimum yep. of what we must play. That's right. Do, is it the third meeting that they file for reclassification? Or are you saying no. second? Well, it's still, still second. second. Well, it's still the same. Right. Okay. 
that tells us the minimum that we should play. Yep. And then, so what we are saying, when we get in that 10 day window, we can play above that classification, and that is what determines the only difference between that and what we've always done is that the site is going to change. We've always been right. able to do that. That's right. But the site really is now more time to it. That's right. That's it. Yes. I was under the impression that we could go, that the director could stand up at four and five and then switch to two threes in the 10 day window because I was under the impression Can they? that not if there are class BB and they were supposed to. Right. Not if it's not the four. Correct. But, but if there are class C band. Sure. That's not the way I read the proposal. So okay. That was my confusion. Okay. okay. There. Question. And I, I mean, it's this. What are the second and third bands? It's directly tied to whatever they play on stage. So if you're second and third band at the same level on stage, you're inside of each table. That's right. That's right. Now, the one thing that it does allow is if somebody requests the E classification, they can play the first put in two fives and then 10 days out, change into two twos, and now all of a sudden. Your schedule is a little different based on the lower your hand. Right. right. But I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying that, but, but then that variation is, is mainly because if somebody picks a five and a two, or, or you know, so, so, so that way you know what to give them in terms of slide reading. Brian and I discussed this thing at length, and that was the little thing he said. The only feasible thing that a director would might do is they might drop before staying in PA. But I, no one no one is gonna go from okay, I'm gonna give you two fives this year to dropping down at the last minute. I just don't that's not that's not gonna be Right. So the site reading judge is gonna be sitting in the room with a list of the bands and next to it will be the letter that they site read. And so use the district chair to have to worry about it other than hit print on that. It prints out and you hand it to the site reading judge. Yeah, and if you're, if you're concerned about like the site reading, what like the next game is going to play and all that, like what I do, and once the schedule is published, I, the day of, I sit down with the full schedule. And on this, the site reading judge's schedule, I actually double check and mark the book numbers on the schedule. Because that's what the site reading judge is going to get. You know, they're not, uh, the, the banner's not going to come to your you know, office and say, I need to change my they can't. So 10 days out. So it helped our site reading judge, especially when we have this, uh, our site reading the email back and forth. I went ahead and marked up with both events. And I was just double checking for that. And, you know, when she had to go back and forth. So that's something that a district trade can do. Um, and that would help. Um, the only other thing I can also think about is, is just the concept of it. Clarifying that, or just I mean, just kind of making it a little more public. Not, I'm not as public. I'm just saying more accessible and pushing it forward to the members as much as possible, because that's where we'll, um, also a lot of questions come in our district too. With the concept of it is: is this an MP or is this a CC? Is this a thread? Um, this creates one point five for this one or down to that. Um, we're expanding that to make it more clarifiable, fair, and more transparent to the members, especially when they're signing by the same time. Sure, 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 absolutely. So this is still tied to school size. That's right. right. How, what, is there a spot that's really specific? Example, like that would change that. If, yes. is it just? A, so I teach at a B school. Right. And therefore I'm required to do a three, oh, I think I do a three and a four is what I'm required to do. So when I go to the sight reading room, I sight read the B sight reading. Correct, this would move you to A. If I chose to go above and I decided to do two grade fives, now I'm going to sight read A instead of reading B. So this is only targeting schools that are playing beyond their classification. Yeah. Well, yes. Yes, yes, but it's also there are some um, schools, some <coughs> A schools that are having to sight read harder music because they're A. So they do two grade fours, but they're still sight, required to do sight reading A. Not so if they request five, classification, right? Because that would change what their sight reading requirement is. Right, but they do it four and a five and they're having to sight read at the A level. Okay, but I but thought the now, way that's if you request classification down. Is A two fives? A is two fives. Okay. I thought A is two fives. 
Yes. Okay. But if they request down a classification. Are you sure? You no, know, A is a, a, is a four to five. Double letter grades are same grade level. Like a B, uh, B, B is two fours. Four. Yes. So an A is a four so to five. A is a four, a is a four to five. A is, okay. So right now, under this, that group that reads a four and a five would now sight read B instead of having to stay with A. Or uh, is, is the intent, but we'll, we'll have to look at it. Again, in all honesty, I don't want us to pass this sight reading thing right now. I don't think it's ready to go. It went out to get the discussion started. And since the discussion started, a lot of things have changed. I don't want this sight reading thing to pass. Totally. I, I just totally think it was a great place. It was a launching point to get the discussion started so that we start talking about the intricacies of what we're really looking at when we talk about classification and how it ties to sight reading and everything else. So my, I guess my point on this is I felt like at the board meeting when this really came up, I think it was last June when we were all together in the room, and the conversation was there were a group of people who felt like now was not the time to tackle classification because of COVID, and then there was a group of people who said now is exactly the time to tackle classification because of COVID. And I felt like in that conversation, there were a lot of people that agreed that tying classification to school size was the inherent issue with the classification system. And it feels like now that is still the thing. We are just adding more intricacies into determining the cycle. And I don't know that the concern for classification ever had to do with the site reading as much as it had to do with how the school size impacts the classification. So I'm a little leery about looking at a proposal again that's tied to school size because I don't know that that really gets to the heart of that discussion that happened last year. That's right. And again, this leads us to that discussion of here is one little aspect of going away from school size. We're just tackling one little part of it, the site reading. Oh my gosh, the intricacies are just trying to figure out how we're going to figure out sight reading going forward when we go away from school size. It's just one little part of it. The reality is going away from classification system is really huge. And so what we're doing right now is just taking one little, just throw it out there and start looking at one little aspect of it. So the question is, how do we, how do, what do we put in the place of school size and None of us have been able to come to an answer yet. But what it is, oh, let me say, let me say, sorry, 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 sorry. There are lots of, it, let me say it this way. So Florida is known for its standards, right? Florida is known that we have high standards, we have high quality of bands. And we have those bands because of our standards. Our standards are three, three parts. Number one, we have a list. We believe that we hold a high standard of what is acceptable music to be on our list to be played for a music performance assessment. Number two, we believe that whatever literature is selected needs to be played at a certain level. Those are the on our judging sheet. The third component of that is progression. And, and I think you said yesterday, John, technical set you free that students need to be moving forward and moving up, and, and so, so that, that is what, what we have, have that we have, have all three prongs of those currently. <clears throat> if we eliminate a prong altogether, then we're losing a third of our standards that we have currently. We're saying, and, and I don't think anybody disagrees that school size is not a great way, it is not, it is not working right now to determine classification. But does that mean that we should abandon standards? I feel like there's a level of playing words against people here. No one's asking for us to reduce our standard. And I feel like whenever people talk about changing the classification system, the first argument back is you want to lower the standard. Everyone wants a medal. And I don't know that that's what anyone's saying. What they're saying is that school size is not the best way to choose the classification system. And that's the argument. The argument isn't that we want to be able to pick up music to play easier stuff. The argument's not that we want people to be able to do these things so that they can sandbag FBA. It's just that they're not, and, the, and I don't think it was against a classification system. They're against the, how the classification system is currently operating. Correct. So it, 
I don't want anyone to think that people who are talking about this are saying like, this is tyranny and we need to change this. I don't think that that's what's happening. I think what they're asking for is a better way to look at our bands. Example, we have middle school band programs that have two twos, or that are two year middle school programs. They should, the way that they approach classification shouldn't be that because they're a larger school, they're an MA. Or the way that, you know, uh, a school in Orlando or Collier County that are booming are now forced up into these classifications because of whatever. I think what people are just asking for is a more streamlined approach to how do we get it? Is an audition ensemble? How many of those players are beginners? What's the number of year of experience with those players? What is the, like, there are more, we have more resources to us to help determine a better way to justify what bands are playing other than school sets. I think that's all that people are really talking about. I just get a little worried that every time this conversation comes back up, the argument that I hear is, we don't want to lower the standard, which I don't know that anyone has ever asked us to do. I'm with, I'm with you. you. I got gotcha. you. So, so far, far in exploring a lot, that we have not been able to find a way that, that we can be consistent, consistent to be able to create a new classification system. That thing is still not being worked on, doesn't being explored. But there's not one that we found to be able to do it. That's fine. I just want to dispel the idea that people are trying to lower the standard because I don't think that that's what's happening. Right. And, oh, oh, good. Just quickly, he doesn't have any, the level E. Yeah, class, classification still exists. It is what it is. But now you can just pick what you want. Not, no. And you'd have to request classification to E. And the way I understand it, that would still have to be voted on. No. Well, that depends on what you want to do. I, I would recommend, I would recommend for us as a board to pass the first two parts. Pass one that we stop voting on as a district. Because the reality is there are some districts, every once in a while, 15 and, and 11 come to mind, that in the past it has been voted down, but rarely. And, he, and that, even then that's been several years since that happened. So, and one of the biggest complaints as we got in the town hall meetings, the things that we did it uh, online and, and then just talking to people, one of the biggest complaints was they felt looked down upon, they felt like they were doing something wrong, they didn't like having to go to ask their district to vote on this, and they felt like they were being um, put in an awkward position, so this would eliminate that. Um, and, and number two, the classification E, now allows high school bands that do not have a middle school feeder at all, or have some severe scheduling issues, um, to still perform for a rating. Which, in effect, still does the same thing, but we don't, well, hold on, I, I'm sorry, let me get the people and then we'll keep going, but that, that's what I would recommend. Yes. Yes. I didn't want to interrupt you. Um, I would just like to point out that the District 7 proposal, if we went with this more streamlined system, would get rid of the need for classification fees compared to what we added. It would also probably eliminate the need for classification four, right? No. So why, why do we need to have a form based on the school size, right? Again, man, I, you get these papers, hold on, go, you go to the district chair, they go to the effective director. I just don't, don't understand why they're making all these papers. Why can't we streamline the process for our, our professional band members? Or experts in their field. We're making strides towards that. I think we're propping up a system again that we're asking, the, our membership is asking. This is action. I mean, this is tangible. I mean, we haven't been able to bring tangible change to our districts yet. And sure, we have those directors in our districts that are like, tear it all down, burn it, and rebuild it. But that's, we know that that's just not how these things change. That's just not, that's just not how they change. They change slowly. So being able to say, this is tight society, we have a more streamlined system. We file for classification, we don't request classification. Those, those letters that they have to submit, very critically awkward situation for so many people that are struggling in their, in their jobs. I mean, this is, this is a lot, this is a lot to bring back in my opinion. This is a lot to bring back to, to Tampa and say, guys, look, like things are happening. 
and we're working backwards. So we're fixing this in an effort to change the original problem. So, so I mean, I think. I just, I just don't see so much <coughs> difference between when I register for concert at UGA, went into the piano line, selected my music at UGA, data, and then it pops up my classification right there, as opposed to having the file on October for my concert ensembles that I may or may not know what they're going to be able to play. Yeah. That, that's why that's it's my head. Right. And there's the next step. John. So, Neil, did we have fewer bands? Reclassify when we adjusted this year than we had in normal years? Or was it the same? It's not the same. same. So maybe, 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 maybe a little less. less. That's what I was asking. So, is there, you know, if you recalibrate it, would it, you know, for less people be reclassified, you know, you know, adjust it back versus take up the system? And you said something earlier too, you, you, you gave us a number on how many people in this state had to reclassify. Do you have those numbers? Do you have that data where we can look from year to year to year to see how many bands have done that? Well, is it as bad as we think it is? You got it for this last year because I put it in the. Um, right, but do we have it right right over <laughs> several years? It's, yeah. Um, um, I've got it. Is that something you can provide to us? Before we make this decision, we really need to look at the numbers to see what the data is. How much, how many bands are reclassifying compared to how many bands that we have? I have it back to 2001 too. It'd be great to see that, I would think. And I can tell you back in 2001 too, there's 20. One more statement too. One. I, I, we had a phenomenal meeting in January uh, about this when we had that town hall and, and listening to some of these veterans stand up that have been around a really long time was really encouraging to hear the, the whys, you know, of why this was in place. But, you know, I'm listening right now and it seems like, like to me, to me that, that sight reading is a byproduct or a sight reading is decided on what we do on the stage. And like Lee was saying, I think. We we'll probably should be, if, if that's, it's not going to be a response to what we perform on stage, we we'll probably should be figuring that out first before we change all the sight reading stuff and then have to go back and change it again because you know, we determine what we do on stage differently now. Yeah. Not to say that yeah. I do agree with the first couple of them. That's a good way to go. Well, it seems like we're kind of coming back a little bit. You're, you're right. right. But the nice thing is, is sight reading is something that we can do now, now and that it is set up that if we change however we're going to do classification and not tied to school size anymore, that sight reading is stay exactly like it is. Because it's still, it's still tied to what you do on stage. Again, I'm not pushing to, to that we should adopt it. I'm just, I'm just saying that's, that's, that's the whole point of sight reading is that it is, does become tied to what we do on stage so that we don't have to change it. That's already in place when we finally figure out how to do classification different. Um, I, I do remember back in the meeting we had that one of the issues also was that uh, we try to have more inclusion for schools who have been choosing not to participate mm -hmm. in, in MPAs. Um, and so I think the classification thing was something that bothers us, but you still can reclassify if you need to. Like And like Neil said, most times when people reclassify, they're not denied. And we have left that in the hands of the districts because we understand better in our district the bands there versus, you know, somebody who's not in our area choosing to do that. Um, so my, my thing is, and, and I would I, I understand that you still, this proposal, you still classify the B, you know, B, double B or whatever. But if you play up, your music and sight reading has to go up. Why did we determine that that had to be a thing? What was the purpose of determining that you need to go up in sight reading just because you are playing higher music? Why was that so? Think we need to do because like in, in high school sports they determine your classification by school size, kind of school size mm -hmm. because they feel like if you have two thousand kids you have more access to more players but you know sometimes you get small schools who you know get players in they have good coaching and it works so that in band world that kind of 
comes back on our, you know, how we teach them in order to do what we need to get done. But I think the the, ba- the basic question for me is why why did you have if you play higher music why did we determine that you have to play higher larger sight reading music harder sight reading and I guess the opposite side of that is why, why wouldn't you play higher sight reading if your kids can play two grade sixes hopefully they can sight read what hears you know whatever it is the class A sight reading and if they can't. Is that an indication of a school that is handing out their concert music on the last day of marching band yeah. and then work on it for five, six months? And the kids are learning by rote. They're not really going to teach them of a music literacy. But that was the question that came in. And the reality is, once we figure out a new class, if we move to a classification system that is not tied to school size, then we will have to tie the site reading to something. Yeah. And, it's going to be, and, and the most logical way to do it is to tie it to what you play on stage, which this gives us a little glimpse into in the, in the proposal from seven. And this, this gives us a glimpse into what that looks like and what we have to be thinking about at that point as well. Um, and this may be something that I should have known, but what is the philosophy behind our classification being tied to school size? Is it for the same reasons that you just said we're proposing? Yeah. yeah, the I idea that, and, and please, Neil, correct me if I'm wrong, but that a healthy band is shooting for around 10% of your school. And once you have 10% of your school, 10% of a school that's 300 is 30 kids, 10% of a school that's 3,000 is 300 kids. So I think that was the original intent. So just looking through the time period, there's 1,074 that my band listed. There's roughly 30 requests for three months. So that's less than 3% of our band. So thinking about how it is tied to school size, we have very few bands requesting to go lower. And actually, several of them are our schools going higher. And so, so you take those off, we're now even less percent. But and you're, again, I'll tell you that there's <coughs> more people going above their classification. Yeah. And we don't have. I mean, if you want to go through all the grade levels of choices, you can figure it out, but maybe Josh has a way to do it. But let me just, let me, let me, let me caution about anybody looking at last year's numbers. Remember that comments only was an option and so, and, and in some places, not as many bands participated as well. And so then people that knew they were going comments only or people that knew they weren't going didn't request that may have done that in a different year because this year there was no penalty. They could still do so on ensemble and things like that too. So this is a little bit of a dangerous year to look at, hard to tell. But, but thinking about that and not looking at these years, I think what Lee was getting to, that this, we're afraid people are gonna stand back, afraid they're gonna go lower. We see that, that they're not. When they have the option, I know this year's a little different because we, we did, say we're coming out of COVID, everybody's automatically down. But even looking at that, um, and I know somebody has to do the data, I bet if we look at the other way, we're going to see that many bands are going above what they're required. And I get the sight reading part of the scary thing because, you know, we, we were C this year, like two, three, we played four to five. Uh, we would have gotten crushed in sight reading at that level based on proposed coverage. It would not have gone up. But at the same time, I think if we're pushing our bands to play more challenging music, um, high school side, I think we should be sight reading at a higher level. And on the middle school side, I think it would be really smart that we tap it at a certain level because there are middle school bands that are going out and playing force and killing it. But I think thinking about like a two year school or even just looking at that's mostly eighth graders, this is the third year point. <coughs> Sight reading a two and a half or three at the middle school is not going to be the same as if I take high school kids and I sight read a two and a half or three. And I think that is that right there is the challenge. I think high school side, us high school people, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine if we play at so I, 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 first experience. 
many, many high school, school agree, directors, do directors do not agree with you. And I've had many phone calls coming to me going, you realize if you guys vote this in, I will never do a grade five again. And they've been doing a grade five for years. I'm not saying that's the reason. Correct. Correct. I know my doesn't align with everybody in my district, but I do think having taught in middle school for five years, and if I tried to play two and a half and threes, and I was told I have to side read twos, um, we're going to play ones and twos. That's going to go terrible. For me. Uh, but uh, I agree. Sense, yeah, and I forgot to say that before we started. One, I really like the philosophy of, you know, kids are a band, so they can play lots of music. That's not their band. That's why they signed up, you know, you know, we certainly need to continue to do more clinics about how to incorporate sight reading into daily rehearsals because we really don't work on sight reading a lot. We just work on resident a lot, and we we play new things every day, a few seconds, and everybody new skills and new rhythms and new. And my fans getting better, so that's just back to the classroom of how to fix what's going on in the classroom. So we don't have to have these discussions because we're really great teachers. But I like the philosophy of let's associate it to um, what the band actually plays to make sure we're not spoon feeding our kids, you know, three pieces of music. When realistically, this is like if they can't, like, like one of my decisions is if we can't play through this concert piece, sight reading, we don't play it for MPS. Because what we're going to have to do to get the band to do that is probably going to be frustrating and sometimes discouraging or monotonous. But I like that philosophy. Of it. But when he just said, That's a lot of this only affects 3% of our bands, and we're really working hard to change this, I don't know of a lot of the systems that are that effective. I can't change a date in my band program. And it doesn't affect more than three percent of the, the kids. It's usually pretty catastrophic when I move from a Monday to a Tuesday. So it it sounds like it's pretty darn good. Three percent? That's why we been having this discussion for years now. That's right. This year, for example, we talked about the price of oil. But I don't think it's going to be that much different. Like Bill said, I want you to have. What do you mean? What was 2000? What year before? <laughs> so normally it's about 100. Neil said normally on a normal year, it's about 100 people that are requesting classification. How many bands in the state of Florida? About 10%. So about 10%. Looking at 2019, 2020, right more than, more than three percent, but it's still not a re it's not a majority by any means. It's not even a significant minority. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Ariel, I see your hand. And Clint, you started to do this thing. But hold, hold on just a second. It's eleven oh five. We've got a lot of stuff to get through. This is why we had the discussion. This is why we went open. This is why the proposals were made. This is to get the discussion started on this stuff where we're going. So, Clint. Ariel, and then we need to go. We need to start making some movement on what we're going to do because we've still got some stuff to get done, and we'd like to be done by twelve. I just want to throw this. It, it was brought up twice about uh, school size and football classification. FHSA made a change. It is now four classifications: metro, suburban, rural, independent. And the way they're doing it is based on the population density. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but that's great information to know that everybody, we're all in the same boat. We're all trying to figure this out. Um, how they're doing it, I, 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 don't, I don't really ever be tied with the FHSA. I just want to put that out. Ariel. Um, so you talked about the three pillars of kind of our students, and I would like to argue that I don't think the third pillar has anything to do with classification. Because I think the third pillar is our directors and our education agent, and you know, all of the universities that everyone comes out of the state and have awesome programs, and all of the all the that we have for ourselves, all of our family and everything that we do with each other. Because, as a lot of people have said, 
we're only counting that 10% or 3% this year, we're going to put that in the gap. But there are so many people in this room that do not play their classification because they are playing harder and they are not required to do it. They do it because they are good educators, they are good directors, they know what they're and what they do. And seeing that that many people do that, and a lot of the directors play their classification because that's what they're using to handle. It has nothing to do with the size of their school. They just know that, okay, that's that's good for what my kids can do. And then the ones that show up as the percentage are the ones that have to go lower for whatever reason. So I don't think that changing anything classification-wise is going to lower standards. If anything, I think anything would stay the same because showing from what we do, people go above and beyond anyways. Because that, that's what we can do. So, and I, side note, I agree with the averages of cyber. I think it's handleable, especially if you want to be a lot of money. Great, thank you. Motion. Motion to um, accept the, under the proposed handbook and changes for district discussion to accept number one, strike from the handbook uh, request this classification will then be presented at the second FBA district meeting for a vote by super ballot. Um, now the handbook should read request for a band to perform in a lower classification must be in writing state the circumstances justifying the request must be signed by the band director and principal and the letter must be attached um, to the classification form, which is due October 1st. Second. Motion and seconded. We just had a lot of discussion. Larry. So let's say, again, we file our classification on the floor. So then in December, something happens, 90 days move away. Is there anything in place you can then require to readjust, or is that? Okay, so it's actually the first question we get asked. It's, it's on page 13, number seven. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Paul. Well, I can talk to you. Dan Ryan, did you amend that to say on school that are in? Oh! Oh! <laughs> I, I think this. Well, that's going to be the policy. Anyway. <laughs> I think the letter. Is in a previous paragraph because this is one C. So this is no, it's, no it's not. Name, but it's the same that are in we, oh no! Well, it okay, says it now because we passed it. It does say it now. So, but we'll make sure that it's there. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I know this came out of the task force. My question is: Does should we send this back to the EPA committee to look over once before? In all seriousness, before we make a unilateral decision among us away from a committee that's in place to look at some of these changes if you do what we uh, sorry what we can do now is pass it and it has to get passed by us again in june it has to be passed by the mem general membership in june we Which if we don't want number one, number one. if we don't pass it now it will not be enacted until 23 24. we can pass it now ask Bernie or Jeff to take it to that committee to look at it and then they can set and then the, if they have issues they can ask us to look at it again but if we don't pass it now it won't happen for this year coming up it'll be the year after that so the reason I bring this up is I get in our district three meeting it was pretty much asked of me to make a motion to table it which isn't happening because there's motion on the floor so that's why I'm, I'm sort of asking if it would be better to do that. I don't know if other people's districts feel like motion has to happen right now. Well, this um, is just a motion for just this process. This I is fixing classification. This is one tiny process. I understand. They still felt like there needed, like there needed to be more eyes on this, and that that was the work of the committee. And the committee can do that. I mean, and the committee come back and say that we can vote it down if, if that's what we want to do. I'm, that's that's why I was adding a new Okay. Great. Any other discussion? Okay, question's been called. All those in favor of the Tamara, of the Tamara, <laughs> all those in favor of the motion as Tamara read it, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, is there a motion dealing with the suck, any other part of any anything else? 
And currently, if you uh, file for a class, or you request classification, you, what do you cite read? MD. But right now, he is, an, he is, he is not a thing. He was only an emergency. It is gone, it is gone because the year is over. And that was only a temporary thing in an emergency the president can. And anyone going in site reading technically can request to site read up. Yes. So technically, in a hypothetical world where every band and board is classified to you can pick whatever music they want and then walk in the side of your room and request whatever classification they want. Is that not well, well, I would recommend right, right now, now there is no even request. No, I'm saying in the world where he was a man, okay. where every band classified as a team, is that technically circumvented classification? Because everyone can pick anything they want at secondary level. Well, that classification can be specifically perform two selections. That was a question that came up earlier, and that was why it was worded that way. Well, for high school, what's the lowest classification for C? Two and no, three. Right. So, so, three. Right. so even classification D is not, is not lower. D just gives you the opportunity to pick any of the existing classifications, which, which was even E if you put, put this in. But unless we have a motion and vote on it now, classification E will not be available for any school next year. Unless someone would like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to accept number two as it reads. Do you want to? No. Okay, go ahead. Yes, please. Number two says a uh, proposal to make the classification E a permanent classification in our handbook. The E classification would allow any band to perform two selections of any grade level from the FBA list that is not already covered by another classification. Need a second. second. John moved. Yep, second. second by Paul. Discussion time. So what is the E classification band? MD. 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 So or, or they can when they go in request to cyber the hire if they so choose. And as it's read, it just covers any, any classification that doesn't exist currently. It would be the opportunity to play two ones, a one and a two, a two and a two, two and a two. That's it. But you're right, it doesn't specify anything. Technically, if you do six and a four, that's not a part of any classification that you can cite the DMD or two and five. Or a two and five, or cite the DMD. Yeah, there's yes. so yes. do you right. want to amend in this to say classification E would allow any high school band to play on stage a one and a two and two twos or a one and one and a two, a one and two and two two? We spell it out here. I think it's got to be anything that's lower than class C or class CC. Whatever, it's got to be something that's but is reading is reading a grade one and a grade five is that lower than C? No, so then that. But the one is and the five isn't. So do we need to spell it out? Should we spell it out? And just say that classification E is a one to one, a one to two, or a two and a, a two and a two. Because it would be a minimum of a four to five. No, that isn't there. The executive director can do no, but I'm saying that no, a high school can't request an MB classification. A high school can't request an MC. Can't do a special yeah, permission sure. request to go lower? High school can if, if they have 75%. 75% rule. But that doesn't cover Right, but that's not. So that's, that's not. not, that's, not, not that's, a J, that's a JSC. Right, but that isn't just a straight, if it, just a straight high school wouldn't be covered. No, 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 yeah. But if we're just talking about it going down below the below three and two, as far as the high school play, we're basically saying. So well, that makes sense that a high school could request a middle school classification, which would mean the lowest they could do is a one and a two. Because the lowest the middle school can do one and two, right? No. Oh, MD can do one and one. That's right. You could work maybe that 
classification, both pieces have to be lower than the C level. Now, until it's going to be the bottom. And then I have a second question. And this, is, this is asked in our district. Let's say my top band, I'm fine with my B, but I want my second band to be. I think that's already in. What does the handbook say about second third bands? There's a. Um, there's an exception. There's an exception. I think it's in the classification chart that if you're not intending to take your band to state, you can choose any classification for your second band to do it. Okay. It seems like the current policy is pretty flexible. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what I was thinking. Well, the easiest way to do it is just spell it out. Classification, which is two grade twos, two grade twos, one and a two, or two ones. I'd like to amend. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I can do it. Someone else has to. We're going to make our motion. Can I say any combination of pieces in grade two or lower? Doesn't that count at all? You could, but I mean, we're talking. Uh, the, the, I mean, the cleanest, clearest two, a two and a two, a one and a two, or Two ones. I'd like to amend it to where it states specifically that a new classification can, can only play two grade twos, a one and a two, or two grade ones. Okay. All right. So that would need a second. Seconded. All right. Lee. I was going to say, I feel like there's a lot of extra thoughts that are happening. It feels like we're doing the work of the committee. My motion would, my recommendation would be to vote this down and refer the matter to the MPA committee. Which, Which is, is fine, fine but that, that means possible. next year we would not have a grade, e, we would not have an E classification for any band possible, which means that any high school that wanted to do less than a two and a three would not be able to go for a rating. I understand. But if we do, if we pass it now, we still have time to review it. We can send it to all those committees and then we can vote it down in June. If it doesn't work, or we can keep it up, or we can continue to move forward with it. Uh, and again, Y'all's decision. I just want to make sure everybody's aware that if we vote this down, if we don't pass this, it will not be available for any school in the 22 23 school year. It's not yet that it's discussion. Going for ratings is a pretty important thing. Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> to counter that, we also said that if you don't want to lower the standard for those kids. Well, we did. Well, we did. I, I'm just countering the argument. Oh, you're right. So, so Right, right now, now there's an amended motion, motion that, that says class E, e. A one and a one, or sorry, two and a two, a one and a two, one and one. A one and one. It has been seconded. We're in the middle of discussion on that. Do we want that to go forward? Do people have thoughts about that? Do we want that to be available for our high schools coming up in the 22, 21, 22 school year? That was, that was Neil's, Neil's idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah, I like, like that idea. Can we revisit it? But if that's the case, couldn't the president just decide that for another no year? Now it's not an emergency. It's not an emergency. emergency. We're not in an emergency anymore. <laughs> we live in Florida. The pandemic never happened, man. What are you talking about? Being in the state of Florida is an emergency. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. And Lee wins the day. <laughs> So, Corey, why don't you, you want to propose that as an amendment? Okay. Oh my God. Wait, you, amendment to the amendment? You can't amend the amendment. No, 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 no sorry. sorry. To the, oh, oh, we got to vote on this amendment. Okay, sorry. All right, so we'd like to call the question to the amendment. All right, all those in favor of amending the motion to now say Class E will be a one and a one, a one and a two, or a two and a two. All those in favor of that amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Well, right now, well, we can't we can't do that yet. We can't do that yet. All right. So, all those in favor of that amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Now the motion is back on the floor. It's been amended. If you wish to amend it again, we can do that now. Proposing to amend the current proposal to just change the classification to. Uh, allow classification for the 2022-2023 school year. That's a good second. And also spell yeah. out the two. And containing all the verbiage we just amended that can be two two. Yeah, correct. Two, two, that'd be, that's right. That'd be there. That's right. That's right. That's right. Who seconded that? Brian. Brian did. 
right, that's, right, that's the second in discussion. discussion. I'm making it just a one-year one thing, and this board will revisit again next year. So we're striking the word permanent and adding the school year. That's right. Okay. Just want to make sure I have that. Any discussion on that? Having none, I would entertain a question. The question has been called. All those in favor of the motion, as it stands now, does anyone need, a, need us to read it again? Okay. Please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Woo! Okay. As amended. Yeah, the motion is amended. Okay, so now the vote motion. <laughs> I, my woo is premature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now there's a motion on the floor. Discussion. If not, someone could call the question. Question's question been called by everyone. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. okay. All right, motion so, carries. So who made that motion to pass the amended motion? Okay. Who seconded? Do you have to make a motion to pass the amendment? Wasn't, that, wasn't an original it's motion made? No, no. We amended it. We amended it twice. We, and then we both passed the original motion. motion. Right. We amended it first. Right, but I didn't think you had to make a new motion. We added another amendment, so we had two amendments. Yeah. Now we passed the original motion as amended. Correct. That's what I thought. I thought yeah. you were asking That's what we just did. Another motion. Okay. okay, so back to the agenda. <laughs> Item number 12 is the listing of the all state band clinicians. We all can read that. Neil, do you have anything extra that you'd like to add about item number 12? Number 12 is the listing. Yes, sir. Do we need to, to make, do something about number three, the proposed changes to concert? We never voted on that. Do we need to do anything? No, no, because it never came, the whole thing never came to us as a motion. All it was was task force said, please discuss this in your district. Okay. To get conversations started, here's what happens. But that was never even came as a motion. Oh, you know what? We do have to go back and deal with the proposals from the districts. Yes. That we've never dealt with. Okay. Okay. But you know what we're doing? Right. So let me pull that back up. So now the letter is just communication. So Amanda from District 7, did that come as a motion or is that simply information as about thoughts from District 7? No, that's okay. That just means we don't have to vote on it right now. Okay, so we're going to the proposals that we need to finish up. And there were just two, I believe. Yes, ma'am. Let's say in District 7 submit it as a proposal for June. Uh, the district will have to vote on it. Yeah, I'm not sure you have a district meeting between now and then. So and really there's not we need to it came up in June. We wouldn't be able to do we wouldn't be able to do anything with it until the 22-23 school year. 23, 24 school years. So coming up in June or coming up in the fall meeting is not really going to change anything. Couldn't she move it right now? She could. I don't want to cause chaos, but that was my question. I guess you could do it as a district chair. You could make it a proposal. On a new business. All right, District, District 15, 15 uh, think about it because we got a minute. Okay. Think about it. District, District 15, 15, meeting four, motion to add site reading proposal below. And this was Dana, this was from Cole and Richard Euler. It passed in that district, which means that it is a live motion on our floor. And I will entertain a, a motion about what to do with this or open it up for discussion. I'm in proposals. Proposals, District 15, meeting four. Page four. Page four. District 15, meeting number four. Uh, are we able 
this we can defeat it or table it. Yes. yes. So I make a motion to send this uh, to the MPA and session. Second. Seconded. Any and discussion task. on that? Can we add the task force to that? And the task force to that one? And the MPA. Site reading and task force. Or staff. Oh. Okay, any discussion on that motion? Uh, who seconded that? Paul. Paul's on the second. You got two fingers working, man. Okay. All right. If there's no discussion, I'll entertain the question. The question has been called. All those in favor of referring this to the three committees listed signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, if you would please scroll on down to Ted Schistels, which is on page six. <laughs> yeah, little repeat signs are working out well over there. Man. That's good. All right, any discussion on that? Otherwise, we can entertain a motion. Uh, sorry, question has been called. All those in favor of sending this motion to the same three committees? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Beautiful. Do you have a written? Uh oh. It is written. Email it to me? It is. You have it. It is. District 7. Ted's, Ted's motion is very similar. I know that. Okay. But that's okay. You can still go. The committees can look at it. It's going to get referred to me. Okay. But, okay. And that's, there's nothing wrong with getting referred to a committee. It's just more information for the committee to work with. And there's no way it can be discussed more, and possibly enacted or voted down for 2020. Yes, we would have to vote on it. It could be. But it has to be approved as a proposal, not a <laughs> Correct. Because it's a handbook change, which is two and one. Or one and one, sorry, one and one. I think we should make it so that it's a different matter that this is a baby, that it is a free person, for both the districts and the departments. You want to have a conversation about that. Before. I just want to let there to be conversation and possibly action. You just don't want us to question about it. Sure. Okay, so you'll need to make the motion as new business. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to send District 7's proposal to the committee. Same three. Same three. Same three committees. Okay, need a second. Second, Brian. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the motion is now in committee, in three committees. And that takes that finishes off all of our proposals. That wraps that up. And now, Neil, item on the agenda. Item number 11, uh, sorry, item number 12, All State Bank. That's all state bank one. That, that comes from Clinton's committee. Those are the directors. Okay, so, so just point of information. Yeah, just point of information. Yeah. Item number 13, state MPA adjudicator nominations. It's actually the 2023. Right, that's true. 2023, all state bank nominations. For number 12. Item number 13, state MPA adjudicator nominations. Suggestions for solo ensemble or for band. Email them to Neil. Item number 14, 2023 state MPA dates proposed. Neil, you want to talk on that? Um, now, Russell, we sold on some of because the way the calendar has worked out for everybody's free break and we're going to find a host, um, there's not too many options on where to go. In other words, there's, it's going to be impossible to North Central and the South. south. So, so it might be only two sites, sites this next year. year. Uh, state uh, state insight are, are set, set, set up for Northwest. Northwest. Um, we've been in conference with Florida A&M and this possible Northwest site. But the other, the other three are set. <laughs> the are set. 
Great. Neil, thank you again for doing all that work. It's a lot of stuff, and I know it's a lot of legwork on your on your behalf. And by the way, Phillips Center is giving us that facility, I mean, $4,000 for three days. Wow. That's great. That's great. Because he's, he's a former parent. So. Just, just for the record, so I, I feel the need to say this, um, that's an incredible price because we have our all county there, and it costs us for less than 24 hours in that building, $5,000. So. Yeah, it's a little sore spot with the live show. Just a little bit. That was even a big sore spot the first year because we got it for free the first yep. year. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, item number 16. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, number 15. 15. Officers and officer officers elects for 2223. Yeah, I put that. I put that document in the. Um, yeah, Google Drive. Other? Other. Under other. Semi-correct. I've got to do those. MBA calendar dates for 2223, reviewed and finalized. You should all check that. That's also on the phone number. And if there's any corrections to that, let me know. And I've already done those that have been sent to me. Item number 17, entries, lists, final reports for 21, 22 from districts. Yep, that's all taken care of. I think you all your payments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a little $9,000, so I was just a little worried. Proposed district budgets for 22, 23, we had a lot of discussion, lot of discussion yesterday, yesterday on this. So so any questions before we go home and understand how to do that, please remember to contact uh, Burford uh, County, County Joe, Joe, to talk through your budget to make sure you understand it. We'll be getting the new template of uh, where uh, to put that in, and Joe so and you will work together to get that to us. us. Send those budgets to me. Uh, you can wait for that template to show up, or you can get older than one. And I think I'm going to talk to somebody about her concerns that she mailed you. We've already, done, we've already done item number 19 with the state MPA reports and evaluation. Item number 20, Bander's position is open. Please email those to Neil. Item 21, the board meeting date and place. Please remember that while we are all volunteers, once we volunteer for something, we are making a significant commitment. And this board simply doesn't function without all of us being here. We know that there are many uh, challenges to being at board meetings. But please do your absolute best to get to those board meetings. And I'm saying that as a person who skipped out on the hour last night when this state got changed to go to do graduation. We understand, but please make every effort to anything that is in your control to make sure that you're here. It's just huge for us to be able to continue to do what we do. Um, there we are in discussion about the December board meeting being a Zoom meeting. Uh, so number one, it saves us significant amounts of money. Number two, it saves all of us time from driving. If you have thoughts on that, please communicate those to uh, any of the executive committee. Okay. How, many, just, how many think that's a great idea? Okay. It could make it possible if you want to go to Tri-State or go to USF, it makes you possible to be able to do that and still attend the meeting. You know, in case the meeting was in Daytona. Please, Please don't, don't forget, forget what Bernie talked, talked about with the FSMA, FSMA report yesterday, yesterday. Things, things that are changing for us this year. year. I believe there are two big things that come out of that, right? We need to have two adults in every sewn ensemble room at all times. And the acknowledgement form that we're going to try to get tied to the contract, which would be great. Those dates for the board meetings for next year's change in my calendar. We don't know for sure because uh, Val um, has not shared sure those, those dates, dates yet. Yeah. Unless, unless it was given to you guys at the FMEA meeting. No. Uh, uh, you can look at it. So I actually, it's in my room. Do you count? Yeah. 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 That, this may be a picture by FMEA. So what should I put in my book? I'd put both for right now because we don't know we don't know which one it is. Unless it was in their FMEA room. He's checking that out. I don't remember seeing it in there, but he's looking. Okay. Okay. Then while Bernie checks out that date, we may come back and amend that. Right now, that's the information that we have. 
Uh, we're, we're, we don't have a date. We don't have a date yet. Okay. okay. The president says we don't have a date yet. So we don't have a date yet. So we don't have a date yet. Okay. Yes, sir. Since Josh is here, can you clean the FDA online classifications to only have our actual classifications because there's some in there that don't exist, such as their name. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if we can email that to Josh, what we'll we're talking about. Is that based on what was in the handbook several years ago? So I don't know if that's changed. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, so we'll be sending that information to Josh. Go to the association. Any teachers of the year in your district, please make sure we send those to Neil. So, so, sitting to my left is the incoming district my chair, is Katie Arkham, and she is the Pinellas County. I'm so sorry. I've been so focused on trying to get through the agenda that I completely forgot that we have few people here today that we didn't have yesterday. So can we do that? We introduced her, but can you do the formal introduction, tell us all about her, all that kind of stuff. Well, you want me to say that? Yeah. Oh, just, she's amazing. She teaches the same high school. <laughs> uh, she actually used to teach at Northside with uh, me and my colleagues for several years. She's an amazing teacher of the year. She's awesome. Just for some of the euphonium player, so she's excellent. Despite <laughs> euphonium, still was district teacher of the year. Yeah. Wow, impressive, <laughs> impressive. <laughs> That's that, right. Is that still the is that still the original building or do they change? No, Torque Town built it. Oh they did? Well, the school's the original building, the bandroom is not. I'm sorry. To okay. The school yeah. is still the same. A lot of history at that school. Yeah. <laughs> and David Wing is brand new today. But we know David. We've seen him and he was here yesterday on the Zoom meeting, we may have seen him. I had graduation, I knew the band director, so I had Absolutely. Good to see you, Dave. We're glad you're here today. Is there anybody else that's here for the first time today? Okay. All right. Very good. Um, other notable recognitions or special performances? Again, please email those to Neil so we can make sure that we get those reflected in the minutes from anybody doing anything in your district. Um, I, 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 that's number four. I can do that. Number three is Hall of Fame is coming back after two years being gone. Yes. So please make sure you promote that. A lot of us got out of the habit of attending it because it didn't exist. So please do a big promotion for that in your districts. That's the same three people that have been on the docket for two years. Right. These same, same three people are finally going to get to be inducted into there. Um, okay. And then, I'm sorry, Kathy. Yeah. Go ahead. So I just emailed you a lot of the Thank you, Kathy. Anybody else with anything for good of the association? Okay, I did not do a good job of budgeting time this weekend. We have 20, we have what well, we have 19, 18 minutes left until we're supposed to finish. However, we go over a few 
Uh, that's what I was, I was going to say. If you all please would indulge, because I think this last part, the swan songs, is ridiculously important. This is a chance for the people that are leaving the board to give us their thoughts, their final parting words as they leave. And this, this is a really big deal. There have been years, I think of one year, that we've actually missed them. We didn't have a chance to do that. So we may go over a few minutes. But if you would please, everybody, just understand that this is a really important thing. OK, real quick. Um, thank you. <laughs> and I need yours, too. Um, is there anybody that can, Charles Duran, he's in 17. Is there any way you can get this to him without postage or anything, or should I just mail it? Um, you don't have an inner county? He's in a different county than we do. Oh, I'll mail it. Okay. And is there anybody to take care of Kent Kessler? Can you get it to him without? Yes. Okay. I'll get it to you. Thank you. Oh. What is it? It's a his life membership pin because he wasn't at the January conference to accept it. And I'm holding Dan's because he wanted it presented. Scooter wanted it. It's next January. All right. So our oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. When you guys do vouchers and you do mileage, um, the um, substantiation is just to support the mileage. So if it's off one, two, three miles, it doesn't matter. Whatever you put on the paper times the mileage rate for IRS, please multiply it correctly. Don't round it up or down because when I put it in QuickBooks, it's going to come up a different rate. So whatever the actual mileage you put down in that blank times 0.585 needs to be what the total is. So don't get to the total and round it up or down. Understand? Okay, screws up my QuickBooks. Okay. So the first person that we have that is rotating off the board is Mr. Lawrence Young. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for working in this organization. Uh, FDA is very important. Um, as a young director, I knew about FDA, but it, uh, like all of us, it takes some time to really understand what it offers. And it does grow you. And I really appreciate being that, having an opportunity to see it from this side and to get a chance to, in some cases, finally meet some of you in person, because we came in at a very volatile time in, in uh, human history, I guess it would be fine to say. Um, it was fun building the plane as we flew. That we did a lot of that. And, um, and just experiencing everything. And most, mostly, I'm just grateful to serve in District 1. I grew up there, I worked there, my dad worked there, and it was just an honor to to really serve them and, and do it. I was not perfect by any means, but I've always done the best that I could do. And uh, I'm gonna miss being able to come down here and stay in this uh, lush, lush accommodations. But it has been a lot of fun. And, uh, and I will continue working for FBA and be here. Uh, maybe not on the board, but we're turning over to the very capable hands with this deals here. So, I love each and every one of you, and I thank you for uh, serving so diligently and continue to hold up the banner because it is much needed in this office. Thank you. Our next person rotating off the board is Mr. Lee Commander. So I've done a lot of thinking about this particular moment and what I wanted to say. And I sort of think about when I came on the board feeling so overwhelmed because I didn't understand what this was and I remember being asked where my FSMA budget was and looking at John like what are you talking about and feeling super overwhelmed and I echo Lawrence in that you learn a lot and you learn a lot about what FBA does really really well and you also learn a lot about things that maybe you have questions about or things that you personally don't think are done as well. But over my time being in this position, what I have learned the most is that I really love this organization. I really support this organization. I really care a lot about this and what it provides for me as a professional. But what I would challenge everyone to do going forward is to constantly evaluate whether if what we're doing 
right now fits the best need of our membership and the best needs of your district and the best needs of everyone that we serve. You have a lot of power in this position being a voting member towards enacting change. And I always appreciated that even when we disagree, it came from the same place. It came from the same protection of the organization and the same protection of those rules and the same amount of care that goes into it. So if there's one selfish thing I can ask is that no one misread any time that I maybe was impassioned about a particular item as me being against the organization. In fact, it's in the very opposite stance that I spoke. It's in the idea that I really care a lot about propelling this forward and I care a lot about the membership as a whole. And I hope that you guys will continue to have those really intense and really uh, difficult conversations for the sake of growth, for the sake of standard, and for the sake of this group of people that we protect. Um, it's been an honor sitting on this board, and I look forward to how I can help FBA in the future. Thank you. All right, District 5, Mr. Jonathan Mulder. District 7, Ms. Amanda Griffiths. I'll make it quick. I just want to say thank you to everybody. FBA has helped me in so many ways, and so many that I can't even really begin to express how much FBA has done for me moving to this state from North Carolina and starting my teaching career here. I just would not, not I just would not be here at all if it weren't for FBA. So I love, uh, really enjoyed um, representing my district specifically. I love District 7, I love Tampa. It was an honor to serve with Jeff. Um, uh, really, really huge honor to work with him and to be, have someone um, so close who I can pick their brain with so much experience. Um, and I'm excited for my new family that is about to happen, but I'm, I'm also very excited for um, being able to serve FBA again in some capacity in, in hopefully the near future, but very excited for, for what's coming up. District 9, Mr. Corey Simpson. They, they really sold us anything that they really sold. 
District 11, Mr. David Wing. Well, I've been a district officer for the past eight years, and I'm looking forward to just being a normal band director. Yeah. Uh, uh, normal. Uh, teaching high school is my second year, or my third, so I'm excited to take a little bit off my plate, but I've learned a lot. Uh, thank you to all of you for the relationships that we've built. And, uh, I just have a huge, I, I, it's it really made me learn a lot about me as a person. I've learned a lot about the people in my district and helping them. And when I came in, I had no clue the behind the scenes that this all takes and the people you have to deal with and the things that you have to make happen. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I know we're in great hands with JR taking over for us. Um, but thank you guys so much. And it's been an honor. And if you need me for any committees or anything, I'm happy to serve. But I just need a break from district chair. <laughs> All right, District 19, Ms. Ariel Reddick. District 21, Mr. Rick Fowler. Um, this is my second form run. Uh, I've done either chairman or secretary for 14 of the last 18 years. This is a lot of time in this chair. Um, and, then, and having done that so for so much and then spending a lot of time on varying different committees, especially the, the MBA committee for a while uh, and the jazz committee, I would say one, I, I think we, you, you start to understand how important this is, this room is and these tables. Um, I would say congratulations to all of you, especially over the last two years, um, because we basically were all brand new two years in a row. We literally tried to invent things that nobody knew could happen. You know, and, and I applaud and, and congratulate and thank everybody for that. I would say my kind of 
parting thing is twofold, really. I would hope that as a board, the 21 or soon to be 23 districts um, understand the importance of this table as the executive board and what they can do to help. And, and, uh, and our job really is to help guide them and think a little bit more. Um, and then my next other, my other big thing really would be to uh, say trust the committees. Trust the committees. Uh, I find, you know, I've sat beside this chair a long time. Sometimes I will depart and sometimes I will not. We often will get kind of bogged down in doing committee work here. But we have some great, great directors and professionals in this field. And I would, I would encourage you very much to trust those committees to do that stuff so when they come back to you, there's a little bit more of that concrete opportunity to make those decisions. So thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. And our junior high middle school rep, Ms. Tamara Lewis. When I talked to Jeff about becoming the junior high middle school rep, I had a very different image in my head of what it was going to be like. <laughs> um, that was two months before the world shut down. Um, and I had a lot of different plans, but I have to say that I'm very proud of the work that we've done over the past two years to give students opportunities to continue to do the things that we normally do. And I think we're just seeing on my Facebook feed and talking to band directors, hearing about their concerts, um, and, and seeing that everyone's back with live music performances is very exciting. Um, my advice for all of you is to think and speak your mind. Don't be afraid to talk, because um, your opinion, your um, words are valuable. And I'm going to echo what Mr. Fowler said with trust the committees. There, and, and sometimes you have to reiterate to your district membership, there is no one here that's out to get anybody. We're all here working for the best of the organization. Thank you. And finally, our past president, Ms. Kathy Leibinger.
that the dates had changed and things got switched and I was no longer able to do something I was passionate about. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of tears. Um, but I realized that it's my responsibility to take what I learned and bring it back home. And so I thought it was really fitting that I was physically driving away from my time at Camp Bay College to come back here and bring it home. And they had a full-time job of offering this year that opened. Um, and six years ago, I would have gone for it. And this year, I had no interest whatsoever because I'm supposed to be here. And I appreciate it. And with, with Kathy retiring uh, off of the board, I want to just say a special thank you to you too, Kathy, for not only mentoring me and bringing me on, but I think all of us owe her a huge debt of gratitude to get us into what we were doing as we were in the very beginning of the shutdown stage of all that COVID stuff and all those things. And everyone here at the front table with all they did, but Kathy, you're the one that really led us into spearheading, going online with our first summer conference, doing all those things that had to happen that spread out throughout the state. But you were such a leader in all those things. So I want to say thank you very much for everything you've done. And I really, really appreciate you.